we are looking again at the blessing but part three the blessing part three topic 156 we are still looking at this topic in depth and it's such a blessing to see that we can actually go into this topic in depth and for me i want to say yes it's such a blessing to go into such a topic in depth because i really believe that these are some of the areas where the church or the body of christ or the children of god need the foundation of the word of god and they need teaching true teaching about this area and about this topic of blessing so today we are going to be looking in depth about this area of tithing we are going to be looking at the section of tithing in blessing part three so tithing is a connection to a blessing tithing is a connection to a blessing before i go ahead in this topic of tithing i want to make it clear starting from the word go that so many times tithing people have made tithing to be like a you know, it is like, uh, how should I say it? Uh, something that I must do, something that I have to do, something that I do, but it is not coming from a place of love. Everything we do in the Lord, it doesn't matter if you are serving the Lord, if, if you are ministering for the Lord, or if you are giving for the Lord, remember it has to come from a place of love. It has to come from a place of love, for love has to be the foundation of your tithe. Love has to be the foundation of your tithe. Love has to be the foundation of your giving. If the love is not there, I am telling you something, then you are just doing an act. Love has to be the basis. So I want to start by saying, number one, we tithe because of our love for our father. Our father has loved us so much. He has given his own son to die for us, sacrifice his only son. So I am giving to the Lord, whether I am giving a tithe, whether I'm giving a seed, whether I'm giving an offering, whether I'm just blessing someone, I am giving from a place of that love, or that depth, that love that I've received from the Father. I love him. So I am giving from that place. Let me tell you something. You can do the tithing. You can do everything correctly. But if it's not coming from the place of love, I assure you right now, now, I'm sorry to say, but it's all in vain. It is all an act. Let all this come from a place of love. The moment we start giving and giving our tithe from a place of love, uh, from a place of Father, I love you, that even this tithe I'm giving is not even enough to express how much I love you. You know what I mean? That is the right place. That is come from that place of this is how much I love you, Lord, that I can surrender all before you, Almighty Father, and that I can walk trusting that you, Almighty Father, are my source and you are going to bless me. It is so important that we give from a place of love. If you haven't gotten to that level of giving your tithe from a place of love. I want to ask the Holy Spirit. I want to ask the Lord to give you revelation. I want to ask the Lord to immerse you so much in his love that you get to understand that even your giving is not enough. It's not even a substitute for what God has done for you. Okay, so if you are there feeling proud that, yeah, I just gave my tithe, let me tell you something. It is not even something that can substitute the love of Christ, the love of our God. We give because we love him. We give because we are grateful for what he has done for us. We give our tithe because we are saying, my father, here I am. I'm using this to say, Lord, even this mighty father, I lay it down for you because you are my source in you, I trust. So I just wanted to make sure that I laid that first foundation from the beginning, that tithing has to come from a place of love. Everything that our Father has done for us, everything He's still doing for us, is coming from a place of love. You know, He, he has a choice not to bless us, but because He loves us, He has made us a blessing and he has given us every need and beyond our needs so let me go again into tithing let me just go back there into tithing so we are looking at tithing connects you to a blessing tithing connects us to a blessing because we actively put our trust in god and choose his system the moment you tithe the moment you say lord i am going to give you this 10 percent the 10th of what you have given me mighty father is you are trying 
crying and you are saying to God that I am trusting you, O oh Father. I am trusting you that even what I have is not enough. So I am trusting you with my finances and I'm choosing to be blessed through your system, not through the system of the world, but through your system. Also, God blessed Adam even before he had life in him. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle of all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let me tell you something that is so prof profound to understand that God blessed Abraham, uh, sorry, God blessed Adam, sorry, God blessed Adam, the first man, before he even had life in him. It was the intention of God from the beginning. That is how much God loves us. From the intention of God from the beginning, that before even Adam, Adam had life in him, God already decided and said in his word that man will be blessed and will have dominion and will multiply. Tithing comes after the blessing is spoken over you. And when you tithe, you connect to it and it starts to work. So remember, as we are saying here, tithing comes after the blessing is actually spoken. But when you give your tithe, you are actually tapping and connecting into this blessing that is already spoken over you. Tithing is not the blessing spoken over you. A blessing has already been spoken over you as a child of God. But when you tithe, you connect into this blessing supernaturally. Abraham was blessed, then tithed. Genesis chapter 14, verse 19 to verse 20. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Verse 20. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. So we can see here that Abraham was first blessed and then he actually tithed. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the Old Testament, we can see here Abraham tithing a tenth of everything that he got. The blessing worked on Abraham's behalf. The blessing that God had given earlier already, Abraham, God spoke a blessing upon him. It already was working on Abraham's behalf. Abraham giving a, a tithe is tapping into this blessing that God has already given from the beginning. The word of God came out and the word of God already spoke a blessing upon Abraham. So we have to understand that Abraham is blessed. Okay. Abraham was blessed already. A word was already spoken upon his life and upon his family and upon the coming generations. Tithe, Abraham tithing, we see him tapping into this blessing. We have the blessing over us because of Jesus and we are connected to the promises over Abraham. Uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Remember, we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we have tapped and connected into this blessing through Jesus Christ. Even the blessing of Abraham, the, the father of our faith, we have tapped into that blessing because of Abraham. We as children of God are blessed, okay? We are blessed as children of God from the word go. From the moment we receive Jesus Christ in our lives, we are tapping into that blessing already and we are tapping into the blessing of Abraham as Gentiles. When we tithe, we put God first and then the blessing flows. It is so important. It is so important. I've had so many people, oh, so many people, these discussions about tithing, so many discussions about tithing. Actually, the discussions about tithing are so exhausting. <laughs> I get so exhausted through these discussions about tithing. Seriously? Really? <laughs> Children of God? Is our, I mean, what, what are we saying to God? Is our God that small? Okay, is our God that small that he really, really wants your tithe that badly? <laughs> you know, that we have to really debate on, you know, wh why not give 90% anyway, you know? I usually say, why not give 90%? Why are we even talking about the 10%? <laughs> why are we talking about the 10th percent? If we are saying we are children of God, our faith is in him and we trust him, child of God, go ahead and give him 10, 90%. <laughs> why are we even debating about the 10%? 
for what our God has done, for what our God does daily in our life, the protection he gives us. We are not paying our God for what he's doing, but you know what? We are expressing our love and appreciation for him and for what he's doing. So remember here when we say that the tithe is all about putting God first, you are trying to say to him, Father, you are first. I put you first. Before I start doing all these things on what I've received, I want to put you first. It is that act, it's that action of putting God first and saying to God, you are first in my life. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get through all the bills that I have to pay, but I choose you first. I choose you first regardless. And I choose not to worry, but I choose to trust you. So when we give our tithe, first to the Lord, we are trying and we are saying to God that I'm choosing you first. And I know and I trust that Lord, you will cover everything else. Because let me tell you something. Anyway, your salary is not going to cover it all. And God doesn't want things to just be covered. God wants to uh, bless you in abundance. He doesn't want you to just have enough you know, just for the enough. He wants you to have a blessing in abundance. And when you put him first and you say, Father, you are first in my life, even in my finances, you are first. You are trying to say to our God, I trust you with everything. I trust you with my finances. I trust you with everything of God because I choose you first. So it is such an important, profound thing when we give our tithe. Because when you give your tithe from an area of God, I trust you first, then the blessing flows. The blessing flows. Every single time I'm always saying, and we are always talking this with my husband, we are always saying over and over, you know what? I, I don't know how God does it. <laughs> Every time I'm always saying, I don't know how he does it, you know. I don't know how he, he does it every single month. I don't know how he does it, you know. And I'm always, always in awe. I'm always in awe about the goodness of God, you know. And I believe that is what the Father wants wants to see in our life. He wants that our daily life, the, the area of our finances and provision, we are just saying one thing. It is God, it's not me. Because the moment you are starting to plan your salary and the moment you are holding back the tithe and saying this money is not enough, God, I need this and this, you are trying to say to God that you have got it all, that you, are, you, are, you have got this, that you know what? You will provide every need. And let me tell you something, child of God. I don't care how much money you are getting. <laughs> I don't care how much money you are getting. Because the blessing is also beyond just finances. The blessing has to be fully in every area of our lives. And the protector, the provider, our health. I don't even know how many blessings I can count around us. Our peace, our joy cannot just be bought. You cannot say that the money is going to be able to fulfill and cover everything. Let me tell you, it can't cover everything. So when you tithe to the Lord, you are saying to him, you are my number one. You are my first Lord. I give you my family and my, you have my protection, Lord. I, I give you my health. That is what you are saying to the Lord when you give your tithe. So tithe is you saying to your father, you are my everything, Lord. You are my everything. I can't. I will not do it without you. My whole life depends on you and that you tap into the blessing. The blessing flows. And you know what is amazing? Every single time I've said, I'm always saying, I don't know how God does it. I don't know how he does it. Every month, I have more than enough. Every month. You know what? I, I, I'm, you know, and that is for me what is profound about God and what he wants to do. And if we can understand that, I believe that we can be able to give a tithe willingly. A tithe should not be something that we children of God must discuss, debate about. Oh, the debates about a tithe are just very, very strenuous. I don't know. I can't. I can't even do debates about a tithe. I can't do debates about offering. What is that? <laughs> Offering, if you love your father so much and you know how much he loves you and how much he wants to bless you, we should be open to bless. We should be open to give all of it to him and say, Father, you know what, my father? You are my everything. I trust you. I trust that you will take care of my family. I trust that you will take care of my kids' school fees. I trust that you will take care of my bills. I trust that you will even do beyond what I'm thinking or even what I'm asking. You are going to bless me in abundance, Lord. And I'm trusting you with this. 
and you lay it at his altar. And I believe the father, when we tithe, is looking at our heart and he wants our heart when we are tithing. So why is tithing important? God always kept something for himself as he, as that we would not trust in our own ways. Tithing is very important to understand, number one. God always kept something for himself as that we would not trust in our own ways. It is, it is something from the beginning until today. God wants us to make sure that we don't trust in ourselves, but we learn to trust him. And for me, that is the one thing about that we find in the world out there. The world out there, they are doing everything they can. They, I, 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 they, you can accumulate the highest wealth. You can accumulate everything. But let me tell you something you will not have it you will not have it all i've seen very many people with the wealth of this world but very very sad with the wealth of this world but very very bitter you know so it is so important to understand that let me tell you something we ought to trust the lord god wants us to, as we give our tithe to be in a place where we can trust him we can trust him daily i think i've talked so much about that he put a tree in the garden of eden that was his and that is Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to verse 17. Verse 16, And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For, the, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. In the beginning, from the beginning, we can see God reserving and kept something for himself. He did not give everything. He kept something, reserving something for himself. And you know what happened when, when Adam and Eve decided to go around and, you know, eat the fruit from this tree. From the beginning, God wants to reserve something for himself. Tithing is always putting God first. This I have exhausted. We have talked about this. It is all about putting God first. It is not just something about your money or your finances, but it's about the issue and the matter of your heart. The moment you lay out from the beginning of the month or when you get that money in your account or when you receive that money and you immediately, without even counting uh, the bills that you have to pay, the things that have to be paid, and you say, here is, Lord, I give you my, my tithe first. You are saying to God, I trust you first. Okay, I, I don't trust my job past. I don't first trust my, my spouse or my partner. I don't first trust the government. I don't trust, I don't know what, what we can say. I don't even trust the walls of this house. The walls of this house will not protect me. You can have the highest fence and the highest security. Believe me, it will not protect you. So when you are giving your tithe, in other words, you are saying to the Lord, you are giving the Lord your heart and you are saying to him, I want you to be first in my life. Because when you put God first, believe me, the rest is covered. So by giving tithe, we are putting God first and we are financially declaring that God, you are my first. You are my number one. You are my first and you will take care of every need financially, my health, my family, protection. I am taken care of Lord because you are my first and i believe that is one area that the devil fights against when it comes to the child of god when it comes to human beings and creation as long as the devil can make us known to to give god the first place in everything we do i'm talking about in our worship in everything we do if the devil can make us or the situations around us can push us not to put god first then he has won because from the beginning, God desires that we put him first in our worship, in everything we do. We come and we put him as first, as number one. Not only in the other things, but even in our finances, we put the Lord first. God rejected Cain's offering because he did not put God first. I have had so many sermons, so many people talking about Cain. And Abel and everything. But let me tell you something. This is just on point without fail. The reason why God rejected Cain's offering was not because it was just 
food and it was just it was because he did not put God first but brought his offering at the process of time. He brought his offering at the end of the harvest. Cain brought the leftovers, not the first fruits. And you can see that in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the grain to the Lord. Cain did not bring his first fruits, but Cain actually brought to the Lord leftovers. And that is why the Lord rejected the offering of Cain. And we know the whole story about Cain and Abel. But it is so important to understand that Cain still brought something, you know. He still brought something to God, you know. He still brought something. But we can see here a very profound point that he brought a leftover to the Lord. Like, you know, here it is anyway. I'm still giving you a mentai. So he was like on duty, like doing just a duty. You know, a duty. It wasn't coming from a place of honor of all. Oh, this is God Almighty. He gave the leftovers. And I think we can learn so much. We can learn so much from the story of, of Cain and Abel when we are giving our tithe. We ought to give our fast to the Lord, our fast fruits to the Lord. Before the accounts, the bills, this, that, we ought to learn to give God our first fruits. And that is very important because it answers so much about the issue of your heart. It answers so much about how you honor God. It answers so much how you respect God than the other things. It, 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 it shows so much about your trust in your God. You know, when you look at, at Cain and what he did. So when we look at the New Testament also, it teaches us that we are stewards and that all we have is the Lord's. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So we can see here in the New Testament, the Bible is talking about stewards. We are stewards. We are caretakers. Of thing of that which is not ours but it's the lord's that it's not ours that what we have been given is not ours it is of the lord's and as we are being the right stewards for what god has given us the bible here promises the blessing that will follow i mean the word of god says here that come you who has been faithful over the few i will give you more i will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your lord so there is a blessing through faithfulness it it is not about how much salary you are getting. It's not about how much is coming in, but it's about your faithfulness and how much you are able to be faithful in the little. You are only a steward of what God has given you. It is not yours. It is the Lord's. Everything that God has given you is not yours. It is the Lord's. It is his and it is his. Full stop. I'll not even add on. It is his. So we should not struggle to give the master, our Lord, his. You know, we should not struggle to give him his. And I'm saying if we are struggling to give our God his, then I'm telling you something, there is a big problem. Because today, if, if I give my, I don't know, if I give my child my, I don't know, what should I say? Anything. <laughs> Let's say anything. And then I come tomorrow and I say to my child, okay, what can I say? I give him, let me make it simple, small things. <laughs> I give him 10 cups. Okay, I say to him, boy, keep those 10 cups for me. Uh, they are not, he knows they are not his, they, they, they are mine, okay? And then tomorrow I come around and I say, ah, the 10 cups I gave you, can you just give me one, you know? And there he is looking grumpy and saying no. <laughs> you know, you know? Then I, I would look at my son and say, are, are you okay, seriously? <laughs> are you sure you're fine? Because those cups are mine. I gave you to, to, have, to take care of them. And that is what we are doing as children of God when, when we, we're struggling to give tithe. When we're struggling to give to the Lord. It is his. It is not ours. It is his. We should be open with open arms to give to the Lord and say to him, You are the Lord of everything. And I'm talking about he is the Lord over everything in our life. Our life is not ours. Our life is his. It is his. And you can see the people who have chosen to take their life as theirs, how they are struggling. You know, 
how they are struggling. But the moment we give our life to Christ Jesus, we are saying that my life is not mine. My life is yours. So hence everything that he has given us, it is not ours it is his. It is his. It's the Lord's. And that is what we need to understand. That the moment we get that principle, that Lord, I'm just a steward. I'm only a steward of what you have given me. This is all yours. And I'm only a steward. Uh, because in the end, greediness comes in. You know, we get to a place whereby we become greedy as human beings. But it's so important to understand that what he has given us is not ours. We are only stewards. And we need to understand that it's the Lord's. So when we give back the tithe, it is not us giving to the Lord. It is his anyway. It is our God's. Our reward, uh, when we look here, uh, I was just looking at the time. Our reward is still to come. Our reward for being obedient is still to come. Revelations chapter 22 and verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. To give to everyone according to his work. We are not going to be given rewards according to what we wanted to do. But we are going to be given a reward. And the reward is coming with our Lord according to our works. According to our work in the quiet, in, in the secret. According to the things we did. According to how we gave. We don't have to shout on the top of the hills to everyone to know that we are giving to the Lord. But God is seeing, is seeing what we are doing. And it's very important for us to understand that when we are giving, when we are offering and giving our tithe and giving to the Lord, there is a reward that is coming. The reward is coming with our Lord Jesus Christ. We are all going to be rewarded according to our work. According, remember, to our work. Now, the, when we look at the New Testament here also, we can see the New Testament tithing is saying, God, I choose your system and I want to trust you and your word and I want the blessing to flow in my life. The New Testament giving is no longer a law. We are not under the law anymore in the New Testament giving. But in the New Testament giving, it is highly, and I want to just emphasize this, it is highly a matter of the heart. It is highly a matter of the heart. And we can see so many things that Jesus was talking about. So many things when Jesus was saying that even if you think about that thing, you have actually sinned. So the New Testament giving is about you choosing God's system. That's number one. You wanting to trust the Lord with everything. You saying that, Lord, I trust you first. I am choosing to trust you. And also you choosing to obey his word. Okay, so that's three. So number one, it is about you choosing the system of God of, over the system of this world. Because the system of this world has different rules. The system of this world flat out has different rules. Number two, it is about when you are following the tithing and the giving according to the word of God. You are also saying, Lord, I'm trusting you. My trust is fully fully 100% on you. And it's also about obeying, obeying the word of God. And then we want the blessing to flow into your life, into your family. You want that blessing to flow. And I assure you, child of God, the blessing will flow. The blessing is flowing. Should I say the blessing is flowing? Because when I say the blessing will flow, then you will wait for it. The blessing is flowing. The moment we are obedient, the moment when our hearts are in the right place, our hearts are in the right place, and you are saying, God, I'm choosing you first. God, I'm choosing your system, your word over the system of this world. The blessing flows. And it is so important to understand that our system according to the word of God, is very different from the system of this world. And I think that is a bit of a challenge for, for most people because sometimes you might have, uh, and so many people, some of them have maybe partners who are non-Christians. You have family members who are non-Christians and they see what they are, you are doing, this, that, and they're like, but uh, come on, you know, and you have to first understand the foundation of why you are giving your tithe and the foundation of why you are giving to the Lord. Okay, so you are following the system of the word of God. You are not following the system of the world. The moment you give your life to Christ, the moment you become a child of God, you enter into a new system. You enter into a new walk. Now you have entered the system of the word of God and you are trusting God 
over the system of this world. The system of this world, I assure you, we all know, it has its own principles for blessing. It has its own principles for wealth. Us, as children of God, we're following the word of God and we are obeying the word of God. As we are obeying the word of God, we are also saying, God, I choose you first. You will sustain me. You will bless me abundantly. I choose you first. And let that be a testimony to the world around us. Let it be a testimony to the people who are trusting the system of this world. It is so important in the times we are in where the economies of this world are falling apart. The economies of this world are struggling. Let me tell you something. It is so important for us to turn our eyes to our provider, God. It is so important that we cry out to God and we follow his word. We we don't run and cry like the world around us. And I believe that as we are doing that, the world around us will see our God. We'll see that actually the word of God works and our system, which is the system of God, actually works. And I really believe, child of God, that in the times that we are in, where there's so much desperation, we ought to be obedient to the word of God so that the world around us can know our God can see our God and can desire our God. Let me tell you something. They can desire this God that is such a blessing. This God who gives in abundance. This God, as everyone is in fear, we ought to walk in trust, in faith, in God. Even now, where so much is happening, our eyes must look unto God because he comes first and he, our provision does not come from the world system. Our provision is tapped into the spirit through Jesus Christ, our God and our Savior. He is the provider. He is and he will sustain us. He is going to sustain us. He is going to protect us. He's going to provide for us. He is going to give us a blessing in abundance, regardless of the economy falling, regardless of the economy crumbling, regardless of the economies of this world. Our system is the word of God and he is our provider. So it is very important that from the word go, we understand the tithing because when we understand tithing from the beginning, I believe that offering, giving, we understand this area. I believe we are going to walk uh, confident. We are not going to fear like the world around us. We are not going to tremble like the world around us. We are going to walk saying, my father, my trust is in you. Lord, our trust is in you. And Lord, we know that every need in this home, every need in this family, you will provide in abundance. And you know, as I'm saying this, I really feel in my spirit to say this again to someone who is watching. I know right now you are in fear. I know right now you are in a place of, 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 of what is going to happen. I see someone, you have just lost your job right now. You know, this week, you just lost your job and you are asking what is going to happen. I want to speak this over you. Get up and lift your eyes and look at heaven. Your eyes, look them to heaven. Let God be your provider. God will never fail those who trust in him. He's word says whosoever trusts in me will never be forsaken. You will never be forsaken by God himself. He will never forsake you. If you are a business person right now, your business is struggling. Lift your eyes and look to God. Lift your eyes and look to him. Do not do not for one minute start fearing like the world around you. Do not start to make your own ways of reviving your business. Go back to God. Give your business to him. Follow the principles we are telling you about in his word and lift your eyes to him and say, Father, whosoever believes in you or trusts you shall never be forsaken. Get up and stop crying and lift your eyes to him. God is our provider. God is our everything. But let us understand he must come first in our life. He must not come last when you have gotten a solution. He must not be consulted last when you have consulted every one, all the business people, all the governments, you, you have to first go to him. He must come first. God must feel that he is first in your life. He must go, you must go to him first before anything. Go into his word and tell him, Father, this is your word. I am your child. I am blessed. I am not going to receive a blessing, but I am blessed. And let me tell you something. That is the heart of of our father that is the heart of our god that is the desire of our father that we trust him first before we go to all the other people all the advisors 
the systems of this world to give us advice before we go to cry, before let's go cry to him. Let's go speak to him. Let's get up and say, Lord, we will lift up our eyes. Where will our help come from? Our help will come from our Lord, our Lord Jesus. Our help will not be determined by the systems of this world, by the predictions of this world. Our help comes from from the Lord Almighty. He sustains us. He is our blessing and he blesses us in abundance. He blesses us in abundance. Let the world around us see our God. Let us be proud and allow the Lord. I'm not saying have pride now. I'm not talking about that pride. I'm talking about let us have this trust in our God that the world around us looks at us and says, what is it about these people? <laughs> Everyone is crying. What is it about these people? Okay. It's not pride, but it's just having trust and faith in our God. And when everyone is crying, we are saying our trust is in our God. He will never fail those who trust him. So <laughs> I took long a bit there. <laughs> I took long a bit there. So what happens when we tithe? Let's quickly go through this part. So what happens when we tithe? Jesus takes it. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 8. Here mortal men receive tithe, but there... He receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Jesus takes our tithe. You might be giving your tithe to a, a church, a certain church, but I want you to understand that that tithe is going and Jesus is seeing it in the spiritual realm. The tithe is received by our Lord Jesus Christ. He then spends it on our spiritual development. Jesus then spends it on our spiritual development. Romans chapter 10 verse 14 to verse 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how then shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Remember that when you give the tithe and it is received by our Lord Jesus Christ, it is then spent on your spiritual growth. It is then spent on our spiritual growth as children of God. This same tithe also feeds the ministers who are teaching us the principles of victory. The ministers that are teaching us these principles of victory, this same tithe feeds them. We can look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 14. Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel shall live from the gospel. So when we give our tithe, the word of God talks about let there be food in his house, you know. So it is important to understand that as the, the ministers of the word, as uh, the, the ministers are ministering the word of victory into your life, into the children of God's life, they live on that tithe. They ought to live on that tithe. A minister and their family should not be in a place whereby they, they, are, they are giving time. They, 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 are, they are grounding themselves in the word of God, studying the word of God and giving what the Lord has put in their heart and they, they are struggling. And uh, these tithes are for or also the minister to be able to have food. So I finish by saying tithe connects us to a blessing. So let us tithe. Let us tithe so that we can connect into this blessing that we have been connected to through Jesus Christ. Have a blessed evening. I'm going to try and see if we have any questions on Telegram. For the students, I'm going to look there just now. Okay. All right. No, there's no questions. I believe uh, the students who are here, I believe that it's clear. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is even bringing a lot of revelations. Have a blessed evening. Uh, we hope to see you next week. Have a blessed evening. Get into the scriptures. Get into the word of God in your free time. And let the Holy Spirit also continue to give you revelation in this area of blessing. Stay blessed.